Welcome to the FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. We're in the Rocky Mountains in Denver, Colorado. And tonight, Iroquois Nationals take on Team Canada in Blue Division pool play. Hi, everybody. I'm Quinn Kesnick along with former Team England star Paul Carcaterra. This is a game tonight when the schedule came out. It's a game we wanted, and it's a game the fans want to see. What's most intriguing for you, Paul? Offensive fireworks. When you look at both teams, the creativity, the stick skills, the shooting ability off the charts. But for me, it's really about the Iroquois. There's so much buzz around here at Dick Sporting Goods Park with the Thompsons and everything they bring to the table. This is a group that's never finished better than fourth. I think they could put their stamp on the world championships. This is their biggest game in history. And this is also their youngest team led by co Tarton winner Lyle Thompson of Albany. You look at his overall skill set, it's absolutely off the charts. He's one of the best feeders in this championship venue. His offensive ability in tight quarters, this kid has it all. He's a human highlight reel. Canada lost their opener to Team USA on Thursday night, 10 to 7, but they exploded last night. Bounce back with a big win over England behind Curtis Dixon. I loved what we saw last night. I thought his feeding ability, his overall offensive prowess around that goal line extended. The behind the back pass is cue. Uh, instant offense, Dixon. He was a huge kind of missing piece to Canada in the last couple years. He's primarily been playing box lacrosse. No John Grant Jr. They needed Dixon and he has delivered. The Iroquois Nationals are 2-0 thus far for head coach Steve Bevel, current head coach at SUNY Cortland, former player at Washington College. And Team Canada, Randy Mearns at the helm. 16 years the head coach at Canisius. He has led the Golden Griffins to two NCAA appearances, 08 and 2012. He actually played for Team Canada in the 98 World Championships in Baltimore, Maryland, in one of the epic games all time against Team USA. And I think he's the perfect coach for this team, Q, because he's kind of a hybrid guy. He coaches the American field game at Canisius. He's got a tremendous amount of box lacrosse background, so he gets these players. Standing room only crowd here on field 10. Behind us tonight, Australia takes on England in a, in a critical match but all eyes are focused on Canada against Iroquois. You see Canada in their red and black uniforms for Big Brody Merrill, number 17. Their captain in the middle on the far side, the Iroquois Nationals. As I said earlier, their youngest team in history. And look at the crowd. Look at everybody taking photos right now and trending this thing on Twitter. This is a game that if you're a lacrosse fan here in Denver, Colorado, this is one you're not going to miss in a week that's been defined by weather delays. So we're going to get this thing underway about 40 minutes later than anticipated nothing for us though but after what we've dealt with the last two nights it's late night lacrosse our opening face off jeff snyder on the left 35 in red the hero of the 2006 world games is dylan ward talks to his defense for the final time Jer su jeremy thompson will face off for the iroquois nationals yeah, a little surprised they don't go with vaughn harris i think you need to kind of preserve thompson 74 and white's legs He's an offensive big-time midfielder for the Iroquois as well. Snyder won 18 draws in a runaway win against England last night. Canada bounced back 23-3. to and Thompson wins the clamp, but it looks like Brody Merrill's going to come up with the loose change. And that's par for the course for 17 in red, who all-time leader in Major League Lacrosse ground balls. M most possession gained by any player in the history of that 14-year-old league. The big matchup for 17 in red. I expect him to be on Lyle Thompson and Thompson, the Tawarton Trophy winner, best player in college lacrosse. This is his toughest challenge to date, Brody Merrill. If you watch Team Canada on Thursday night in the loss to the U.S., they've made some subtle changes offensively. That's Jeremy Noble out of Denver, a midfielder. He's playing attack at the point behind. They also changed up the left-hand position. Adam Jones of Canisius gets the start, but you'll see Mark Matthews. David Earl from Notre Dame. To Cam Flint down the right-handed alley. Tied up well by Jeremy Thompson. And Warren Hill, Onondaga Community College. He's headed to Syracuse. The lefty makes his first stop. Love his explosive ability. When this guy is approaching the ball, his step is as aggressive as it gets. Lyle Thompson sends one wide, sprinting out of the substitution box. Lyle playing midfield so far this week. His brother Miles behind the goal. Here's Lyle, right-handed. Double team quickly maintains his balance. He is tough to take down. Shot triggered wide to Cody Jamison. 
Randy Stotts, Syracuse Jr., put up nice numbers for the Orange this year, starting on attack with Jamison and Miles. This is Jeremy Thompson, Lyle Thompson, and Zach Miller, first midfield. Lyle Thompson pegs the corner. He's taken down hard after the shot, slow to get up. Lyle Thompson still staggering a bit. And now he jogs off. You know, Q, everyone talks about the skill set, the ability to get a shot off in traffic. The thing that impresses me the most about Lyle Thompson is his balance. He's a lot stronger than people think. He stays with that high angle right there. You just hope that that injury is not too much. Now time for our bio blast on Lyle Thompson, brought to you by Sector Spiders ETFs. That didn't look good, Paul, when he went down as Snyder pitches and popped forward. Dixon shot blocked from the outside. What a tremendous defensive play by Sid Smith. Vaughn Harris can't corral the loose ball. And here we got a critical loose ball battle between the restraining lines. Procedure call against the Iroquois Nationals and a quick restart for Team Canada. You know, one thing, Q, for Canada, you got to do a better job recognizing Lyle Thompson when he's on the field offensively. Get a short stick on him in that last goal. Kevin Crowley, big righty out of Stony Brook. Philadelphia Wings and now the Chesapeake Bayhawks. This is Jesse King. He'll be a senior next year at Ohio State. Running with Crowley and Wesley Berg now. Switched up to the midfield. He'll be a senior at Denver University next year. Jesse King, lefty. Not great feet, but he's very strong. Berg likes his right hand. He's fearless. Nice cover up by the Iroquois National defense and that is a huge concern for this group in white tonight. How do they play team defense? Quick double. Leaves an opening for Adam Jones. Great bounce shot to the far side. And Team Canada has evened it up at one apiece. What concerns me most about the Iroquois defense cue is their slide and recover. The initial slide is there. Team defense, communication. The initial breakdown of the defense right here with David Earl. You see the slide, but there's no cover. It's almost a discombobulated type of defensive effort there. you got to recognize that. Cato Hill, 66 and white, chose to chase Adam Jones behind the goal. Jones had a step or two on him. Curls top side, takes that extra step to greatness. And teams Canada's offense under coordinator Matt Brown. It's about people movement and ball movement. Jason Noble gets the loose ball, trickles through to Dixon. Big pump fake down low. Noble stuffed in front by Warren Hill. What a stop. That's the explosive approach to the ball with Warren Hill. Watching him in warm-ups the last couple games here. This guy is a beast when it comes to approaching the rock. Look at this save, Quill. The lefty, Hill Academy, and then Onondaga Community College Lasers. This year he was 16-0 as a starter. 77% between the pipes. I thought that was a, a misprint. 4.3 goals against, and he'll be attending Syracuse University. You talked about some keys defensively for the Nationals. What else do you see? The Iroquois Lyle in multiple spots. I think they need to run him at midfield and attack, change it up. And then the second slides defensively, we just saw them. I think that's their Achilles heel when they're on that side of the field playing against the Canada attack. They need to be dialed in. Packed house here, Dick Sporting Goods Park. Standing room only and a crowd that seems to be sympathizing with the Iroquois Nationals. We're five minutes into the first quarter. It's 20 minute running times. Penalty times start when the player sits down in the penalty box. Thompson with a big pump fake. Nice defensive play as that ball is deflected out of bounds by Kyle Rubish. Eight and red, the 25 year old who played at Dowling College. Extra mans in this game should be fun to watch. Pass from Vice to Craig Point, deflected. Lyle Thompson goes down. This is Vice. Great stop by Dylan Ward. Are you kidding me? Offside high, and he was there for the denial. That's the best save I've seen Dylan Ward make in the first three games of this 2014 World Championships for Canada. An insane stop. That was serious heat. Roger Vice can rip it left-handed, 81 in white. And he's on the extra man with Craig Point, 9 in white, a right-handed shooter. 
They both have cannons. And that is a brilliant, brilliant stop. Driving that top hand across the front of his face. That's patience and explosive ability right there. That's sitting on a shot right there, Q. Denver brings Jordan Hall, the lefty out of Delaware, flanked by Cam Flint and Zach Greer. That's the midfield line. Greer had a nice night on Thursday. I thought he was a, a real positive offensive weapon in the loss, the 10-7 loss to the USA squad, a game where Canada only had four assists and 20 shots. It's not why, enough. That's why I thought that England game was good for them last night. They got into the flow. Everyone was sharing the ball. This is Greer. He's a lefty out of Duke. And then Bryant, far side for Flint. Jams it inside to Dixon, a tremendous handle. Shot sails wide. Clark, your keys for Canada. Attack from behind. I think that's a, a soft spot for the Iroquois. You see Noble right there. His explosive ability could be trouble. And then defend the inside. The Iroquois National will jam that ball inside to some of those sure-handed finishers. Noble shows his versatility, draws the double and the foul. I, in, in his move to attack, I asked Matt Brown, an assistant at Denver and, and an assistant with Team Canada, uh, you know, why would you put Noble on attack? He says he's the smartest player. He and Eric Law are the smartest players, IQ-wise, that I have ever coached. And it's the first step behind the cage, too. I mean, who on, on the white can guard Noble from behind? I think that's a huge question mark. Canada extra man. Weapons everywhere. Matthews on that low left spot. Jesse King. Dixon's the trigger man up top. He gives it up and cuts the middle. Noble's got good vision. Not the outside shooter, though. Ball's down right wing. Wesley Berg deflected, and that shot goes over the crossbar. There's the high crease of Warren Hill that we've, we've talked about, Q. And when he's in that spot, if Canada can pass the ball across crease he could be in trouble getting back to that other pipe matthews got hacked as he dished that ball to jones and some of these iroquois national players are playing with hickory full hickory lacrosse sticks when they slash you on your hands on your wrists on your elbows it leaves a mark it is much much heavier than titanium or aluminum 47 white man how do you like that 47 in white tail uh, excuse me travis hill got matthews and it stung him Back to all even. And now Canada will change up their offensive personnel as they continue on this six on six possession here on ESPNU. 43 games of this world championships either on ESPN3, ESPN2, or ESPNU. This is day four of the championship. This is pool play. The winner of this game is sitting in a pretty good spot to end up being number one or number two seed with Team USA. The loser will fall back into kind of the elimination round where you're, you'll have to play a quarterfinal game likely on Wednesday. And so the winner of this game gets a day off, which could be a big advantage down the road. Noble eyes the defense. As you see the Blue Division standings, and Wesley Berg takes that feed from Adam Jones, and Canada looks extremely sharp on offense. This is what I love about Wesley Berg, 14 in red. Shooting versatility. We see time in the room. He could cock it back and let it fly here. Just a little flick of the wrist there. And that shot's moving. I love his release. He changes levels all the time. He changes where that stick is. This guy, you don't know where to track him if you're a goalie. Berg, third team All-American for Bill Tierney. He's got 120 goals so far in his career in 52 games. At the University of Denver. They got DU on their hat, but they call themselves the U University of Denver. Go figure that one out, Paul. <laughs> Snyder flings that one back into his defensive zone. The Iroquois Nationals have not had an offensive possession in quite some time. And Brody Merrill, guess who? Oh, you don't see him miss those first-time grounders very much. In the corner, he should draw a push, and he does. Cody Jamison, a little out of control. Merrill turns, and he gets run up the back. I'll tell you why I don't like this foul. You have Merrill where you want him. Get on his hands, lift his bottom hand, disrupt his pass. He's playing right on that line to begin with. You don't need to get aggressive there. He, he's positioned himself. Once he rolls, he feels pressure. He's falling. You got to sit down and decelerate. You yes. got to hit. You got to hit the brakes. Break down. Use your stick. Jam it between his gloves and, the, and his actual shaft, and just lift. So this Iroquois Nationals man down defense with Mike Lazor, the shorty, Tom Montour. Zach Greer, big bouncer, goes wide. Is Hill there first? No, it's Adam Jones. Record Nationals, big question marks on their defense. Kevin Bucktooth 
43, the lefty with that hickory pole. You see him down in the low left spot. This player, has Tommy Montour, has done a great job. Look at him. Look at the legs he's got. 32-year-old can still motor. Come on, Rob. This ball trickles to the far side of the field, kept alive by Jerome Thompson. But Canada may have a numbers game. Four on four with a trailer coming out of the box. Can they spot him? Yes, they do. It's Crowley. Head fake, shot wide, and wow. What a check behind the ball. We're talking about the hickory poles. Well, there it was. Kevin Bucktooth Jr. has just drawn two slashes. Someone needs to calm him down. And now Team Canada will take their hickory poles off the bench and bring them onto the field. Their GM, Dave Huntley, said, you know what? If they use the hickory heavy poles, we have some on our sideline. We are going to bring them out and use them as a deterrent. Okay, the first one is an absolute hack. But the second one by Mark Matthews right there is an absolute hack. I get it. But the second one, I don't know if we're going to get a look at it. That's the first one. That's a hack. Mark, Ma Mark Matthews, though, he played that one. The second one. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, we didn't let it roll long enough. So it'll be a slashing violation on Kevin Bucktooth Jr. And let's see how Team Canada handles this. I mentioned it last night. Good ball moving inside, lefty Jones finds net. And Canada is excited and fired up. Zippy ball movement on the power play. Penalties are one thing, Q. Penalties against either of these teams and giving them opportunities to go extra man, you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot because of the stick skills and the finishing ability of the boys in red and white. You go man down, you're going to pay. And Adam Jones, he filled up the back of the net last night. He's off to a great start again. Lyle Thompson started the scoring tonight for the Iroquois Nationals, but three straight. Jones, Berg, and Jones. Canada's in business, up three to one. Welcome back to the FIL World Championships of Lacrosse, presented by Trusted Choice here in Denver, Colorado. It's day four, and there is one of the hickory sticks Crafted by Alfie Jacques in upstate New York that is being utilized by Kevin Bucktooth Jr. Talk about a significant weight difference, Paul, and, and what that feels like. That's a, one of those how you like me now checks. You get hit with that stick. I mean, it is brutal. I held one of those prior to the game, and Mark Burnham, one of the assistant coaches, had one in his hands, and that is just dense wood. Jeff Snyder talking things over our referees tonight. Chris Clark, Mike Bransky, Kitaro Shimzu Shimzuza from Japan, and Christian Geschke is the bench official. He is from Germany. Jeremy Thompson on the right, and Jeff Snyder will battle for the clamp. Snyder was the low man and wins it, but the loose ball triggered right to Mike Lazor. Good-looking grounder by Lazor, defensive midfielder who grew up in Carthage, New York, played at Hobart. He's now an assistant coach at Jefferson Community College. He, he, he is a big plus for this Nationals team. He's everything they really haven't had in the past, those two-way midfielders that can get up and down the field, can defend and trigger transition. And here's Lyle Thompson. This is the matchup I was waiting for. Brody Merrill, 17 in red, four in white. The big stage. You see the significant penalty time now that the Iroquois team is going to try to milk away as Jeremy Thompson is double teamed into the corner. Finds Lyle on the far side of the field, who is shadowed by Dan Coates. Seven in red, we've seen him play long pole defense, we've seen him play shorty. Canisius, 2011, he was a first team all Mac type player. Randy Stotts, covered by Matt Vince. And Lyle will cool his heels. No shot clock in world championships. There is a no timer on, like the collegiate game. It's kind of the old school, get it in, keep it in rules. One of uh, a handful of rules differences. 20 minute running quarters, as I said earlier. Overtime is actually two four minute periods, a little break, and, and then sudden victory. And this penalty now set to expire. How about that face off win and how important that ground ball by Lazor turned out to be? Well, if they went extra man again, Canada. Put one in the back of the net, went up 4-1. We have a different ball game here, and I'm just anxious to see what happens when four and white Lyle Thompson gets the rock. One of just a few Iroquois Nationals possessions. The fans are here, standing room only. 
to see this group in white operate. Stotts behind the goal to Miles Thompson, who has 10 assists after two games. This is Lyle, Kotoar Tan winner, off the pick. Sloppy behind the back pass. Good work by Dylan Roy to keep that ball on the carpet, but Miles Thompson comes up with it, makes a beeline, triple team, physical play by Canada in front. Lyle's got it and his eyes are up. Looking for a dive shot. Feet in front, great catch. Merrill's there on defense, the wraparound. Dylan Ward makes another miraculous stop. How about that shot by Miles Thompson? When those guys get it inside, expect anything. And Miles Thompson with that around the world shot. But what's impressing me right now with both teams, Q, as we take another look, is how good they are when the ball's on the ground. Scoop it right up. Do whatever you can. Instincts take over. Canada's struggling to clear. Wow, Ward is popped by Cody Jamison, who's playing with great effort tonight. All the little battles of this game mean something. 2014 World Championship lac Lacrosse Monday. ESPNU's coverage continues. It's England and the United States on ESPNU at 7 o'clock. That game is presented by Trusted Choice. Games are also live on Watch ESPN. We've got a full slate of games tomorrow, five of them, starting at 10 a.m. Scotland, Finland in elimination play. Germany, Czechoslovakia at 1. Japan, Canada at 4. USA England's on the U at 7, and then we'll finish things up on ESPN 3, 10 p.m. It's the Iroquois Nationals against the Australian Sharks. Jordan Hall, lefty out of Delaware. Earl sets a pick. Cato Hill, good feet, 66 in white. He's looked solid. You got Lyle's Th Lyle Thompson on defense, and Earl takes advantage of him with a nice little left-to-left -left split and beats Warren Hill five hole. What I like about David Earl is his ability to be a traditional midfielder on this Canadian national team. So much experience in All-American at Notre Dame. Plays both ends of the field. And that little stutter step, he had the defense bite. Lyle Thompson not known to play defense at Albany. He's an attackman. He takes advantage, he gets to the middle of the field, and he's shooting with great angle. 4-0 run. David Earl played high school ball at the Westminster School up in New England. His dad, Tom, played for the New England Whalers, a professional hockey player who was born in Canada, and that's why David Earl is eligible. David Earl's had an interesting summer, traded twice in Major League Lacrosse. He's from Chesapeake to the Florida launch. He was barely in the Mid-Atlantic region for two weeks. <laughs> One of the early stories of this tournament is 22 in white. Jerome Thompson, the oldest brother of the four Thompsons, and his play has been great thus far. With the ball right now, kicks it down low to Stotts. Jameson and Stotts play catch. Stotts is a, a talented feeder from the corner. Broken stick. It was Vince who broke his stick, but Dylan Ward once again stands tall. Ward has been extremely sharp early. I don't know if Randy Stotts recognized the stick was broken. I thought he could have taken another step or two to increase that angle. Stotts leaned in to Vince, who hit him with the heavy cross check, and the stick snapped in half. Vince then must leave the field immediately and can't touch his stick. Momentary six on five. You're right, Stotts had more time and room than he realized. Jeremy Noble waits for substitutions. It was Kevin Crowley. Looks the defense over. First team All-American back in 2011. Midfielder of the year for Ricky Soul at Stony Brook. Mark Matthews had some passes last night and some fakes that we haven't ever seen. It was quite a display. There's Jordan McIntosh, the utility man. Kicks it off to Crowley. Right-handed alley. Big pump fake. Dixon surveys the defense. Eyes are up for Curtis Dixon. King, one more to McIntosh. Down that right-handed alley, another stick droppage, and it's Matthews, excuse me, Matthews curls the corner left-handed. Too easy. You got that Iroquois national team on the carousel and no coverage on the backside. Spot on, longer possessions favor Canada. Because you see the breakdown. That is not good communication or team defense right there. All the white shirts looking at the ball. 
Matthews back doors. And when he's on the porch, count it. 5-0 run approaching the end of this first quarter. Couldn't come at a better time for the Iroquois Nationals now who are in danger of putting themselves in a very, very difficult spot in terms of a comeback. Snyder's a talented offensive player, 35 in red. Don't call him a Fogo. He can go to the rack. That time he pushed his limitations too far. But behind the play, once again, Travis Hill with a late and unnecessary hit. It's not going to draw a flag. But he knocks Snyder to the ground for no apparent reason. And it costs the Iroquois a possession late in that quarter. As we'll walk this one off with players talking in front of the Iroquois Nationals goal. So Jeff Snyder's going to make a little point here as he walks off towards the bench. Lyle Thompson opened the scoring early, but it's been all Team Canada. Terrific ball movement in a game that fe features offensive firepower. It's Iroquois and Canada. We're back in a moment. Cross Championships is presented by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents. Free to do what's right for you. Now time for a bioblast. Wesley Berg brought to you by Sector Spider ETFs. Straight up smoke when 14 in red has the ball. Great shooter Q and so impressed with his ability to find the back of the net in a variety of spots. He's a good finisher inside, but what I like about him tonight, when they get that Iroquois defense on a carousel, find 14 with time and room, lights out. That USA defense on Thursday night was as buttoned up as I've seen in a long time. And the extended training camp paid off for Dave Petromal and the defensive crew, holding this team, Canada team, to 20 shots and only seven goals. They defended the strong hands very well. The inside, the backside, it was a masterful defensive performance. And if you can get your hands on a copy of that game, uh, if you're a young lacrosse player, a young coach, it is worth a watch. Uh, that that was that was a thing of beauty. I, I really I haven't seen that many good defensive performances at this level. Cohesiveness and just pieces to a puzzle. Everyone understanding and identifying their role in that defense. And then when you have the mastermind Dave Petromala employing the game plan, good things happen. But right now I'm seeing the actual opposite for the boys in white right now, the Iroquois. I just don't see them in unison when Canada has the ball and when they start that initial breakdown of the defense. World Lacrosse Championships here in Denver, Colorado feature 38 teams. Earlier today, Uganda and France played on ESPN3. David Earl looking for two, right in the stick of Warren Hill. An easy stop for the netminder headed to Syracuse. There's 18 games per day behind us right now. England is leading Australia 3-2 halfway through the first quarter. England has never beaten Australia, and that is a critical game. Tomorrow night, Australia plays the Iroquois Nationals, so uh, that, that, is, that is a big, big game. And they always duke it out, Australia and England. I mean, just really close games when you look at the history between the two nations. You played for Team England back in 06 or 02, 2002, 98? 98, 98, 98 in Baltimore with your brother Brian. Shocked you didn't play for the Italians back then. <laughs> ah, stayed with my mother's side of the family. My mom, Diane, was born in England, had dual citizenship, and what an experience for the two of us. We went over, across the pond a couple times, and great relationships. You talk about a team with characters and personality. Some pretty good lacrosse players as well. Zach Miller, highest scoring freshman in the NCAA at Denver last spring. Look at Dylan Roy handling Miles Thompson in nice defense in front on the cutter. Kyle Rubish tied up Roger Weiss. Tremendous defense by Canada. I like Roy, 91 in red on the perimeter cue. I like his athletic ability, his explosiveness. He's their perimeter guy right now. This is pool play. Winner of this game has a strong chance to advance to the semifinals on Thursday night. The top two seeds in the blue division receive buys. Uh, and that's a big deal. You get a Wednesday day off to recuperate. And what's been a very hot 
an injury-filled week. And offsides violation against Canada. Vice picks it up quickly, but there's no numbers for the Iroquois Nationals. 2014 World Lacrosse Championships tomorrow. ESPN News coverage. Iroquois and the U.S. is Tuesday at 7. World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. Tuesday, 7 p.m. on ESPNU. They're letting them play right here, Q. It's two teams getting after it from a physical standpoint. Feet in front. Oh, easy layup, and it's Dylan Ward with a big stop. Re-triggered by the lefty Cody Jamison, and this ball go out of bounds. And once again, some words between Brody Merrill, the right side of your screen, and Cody Jamison. Look at this. Unbelievable effort on the ground ball. Thompson feeds it in. Ward got a piece of that, or it could have been the defender behind him. And then Jamison looks like his second attempt gets deflected on the way, but a lot of jaw in here, Q. Well, that's one you got to put away if you're Jeff, if you're Shatler. Jeff Shatler, 77, with the yellow stick. Look at these two guys after it. Jamison and longtime rivals, Syracuse and Georgetown in the Big East. Indoor, outdoor. Two of the uh, elite players on the globe. Timeout. 16 minutes to go as Dylan Ward has really been a story. Had a nice night against Team USA, making 18 stops. And he's taking a step forward off that effort. I'm seeing a little bit more, though, from him tonight. He's more dialed in, more explosive, comfortable. You know, this is his, his real coming out party in terms of being the guy. I had a big coming out party at Bellarmine as a senior. Just came out of nowhere. Did the 6-2 product. Bellarmine's in Kentucky, Louisville. He was a third-team All-American his senior season, saving 66%. I asked him. You know, what happened? How, how'd you do it? He said, I stopped thinking about the little things and just paid attention to the ball. Has that wide stance and is a terrific indoor goalie as well. And it's a bit of a contrast. He said his stance is the same, Paul. In indoor, the, his top hand is just down between his legs and outside, it's just up. So what looks very different, he said is very similar. Yeah, and he has a wide base and I think the positive of that is he, he's a real pipe to pipe guy and he doesn't have to use a lot of energy because of the wide base getting from one pipe the left to the right pipe the flip side of that is i think sometimes on high shots if he's not really dialed in and explosive enough and then the five hole usa capitalized on some nice change of level shots to the five hole let's see if the iroquois nationals can get something going down five one just under 16 minutes to go before halftime Zach Miller said earlier he led the country in terms of freshman scoring. Well covered by Coates. Stotts near side. Jamison put that one off the crossbar. Ward guessed low. He was smoked. And Jamison was off target. Absolutely. Jamison, from a level standpoint, put it right where he needed to. He had Ward committed low, just, just couldn't convert. Jeremy Thompson, the leader of this team. Roger Weiss, the lefty. Feet inside, backhand shot wide. And a foul against Team Canada. So the Iroquois Nationals now will be able to find their rhythm, perhaps, with the extra man. Nice ball movement on that possession. A lot of pressure, no goals yet, but positive signs for the guys in white. They're getting their opportunities. Ward's been playing fantastic, and from an offensive standpoint, the Iroquois just have to get those reps and, and find a way to, to break. Dylan Ward right now because he is on fire. That is a big, big time stick swing right there by Dylan Roy. Plays for the Denver Outlaws for five years. ECAC Defensive Player of the Year playing for Team Canada. He's looked really good this week has Dylan Roy. He's got great feet in the motor. A little extra man opportunity. Roger Weiss, he can snipe it left-handed. That's Craig Point, right-handed howitzer, absolute blister. Thompson jams it down low, off target. Another turnover. Some more extracurricular activity here, but from an extra man standpoint, I just don't love 
that high wrist pass right there. Get into your flow, change your formations, get a good high percentage shot. And Brody Merrill puts his hands up, waving to Cam Flint. Slow it down, slow it down. Let's rest our defense. Let's run this extra man opportunity to double zeros and then attack. So Canada able to be very patient. Great action today here at Dick Sporting Goods Stadium. I, I thought the feature of the day really was Uganda against France on this very field. A packed house. Tremendous camaraderie shown by the lacrosse community for what is an amazing story of that first year lacrosse program that's competing here in the World Championships. Last night, Joe Beninati and, and Mark Dixon found out that they were calling that game at about 10 o'clock and basically pulled an all-nighter. And some of the backstories on the Ugandan players are, are just, just off the charts amazing, what they've overcome to get here and the great work done by Fields of Growth and Tyler Steinhardt. Uh, you can read a, a, lot, a lot of those stories at InsideLacrosse.com. And, and that was a game I don't think people who watched it will ever forget. Tyler Steinhardt, Kevin Dugan, just an amazing opportunity they've given Uganda lacrosse and it's bigger than the sport. Canada going to work. Lazor cross checks Wesley Berg hard. Dixon thought about a shot. He can let it rip. He loves the underhand righty rip. Crowley, big right-handed alley dodge. Well covered by Hill. Berg sets his feet. Blocked. Ouch. That will leave a mark. I believe it was Adam Bomberry who will be a senior at OCC next year. Longer possessions favor Team Canada and Red. They'll be able to break down this Iroquois defense. Dixon working hard inside. Matthew swims. He got away with a ward. And there's Warren Hill. He's looking like a big-time goalie. Chuck Wilbur loved him at Onondaga this year. Two-time championship game MVP. Made 17 stops against Nassau Community College near where I grew up, Limbrook, Long Island. Nassau's near Hempstead. Yeah, Warren Hill originally committed to Marquette out in Wisconsin. And when I spoke to Joe Amplo, the head coach there, he said Warren Hill has the ability to take Division I lacrosse by storm, and he'll get an opportunity to do so. It'll be a, a battle, a three-way battle with Bobby Wardwell, who started some games for the Orange, and Parker Farragut, who redshirted this year. Jeff Shatler, who's a star in the National Lacrosse League, big lefty to Brett Bucktooth, former player at Syracuse. This is Randy Stotts, likes to lean in and feed. Draws a quick double team from Jesse Gamble. He's pinched, triple team, and the ball's on the carpet. Awesome defense by the guys in red. Gamble's got a trailer, and it's Brody Merrill, who's a threat to score. One pass down the wing. Dixon, underhand over the crossbar, and you see Canada can run if given the opportunity. And when you have a guy like 17 in red, Brody Merrill, I mean, who runs the break from the defensive side better than Brody Merrill? Probably the best of all time doing so. Timeout called by Team Canada. This is a team with their focus on two former players. You see the number 35 and 17 on the back of the Canadian helmets. They actually warm up in pennies with 35 and 17. Two former goalies, Kyle Miller and Chris Sanderson, uh, who both passed of cancer, uh, and that is on the mind of, of this Team Canada all week long. Amazing lacrosse players, even better people. I mean, their loss will, will always be in the hearts of the guys in red. You see that defensive huddle around Taylor Ray, head coach of St. Joe's, who did such a fine job this year with that program, kind of came out of nowhere and put themselves on the national stage. We talked about it earlier today, Uganda and France. This is, this is Uganda. David Onen, 13 scores and then celebrates. Onen's got a, a big time game. That's 12, Ibrahim Makanda. And you see they lose to France nine to two, but this was quite a scene here today. Kevin Bertrand for France, a real good looking player as is Brady Leclerc Martin and goalie Pierre McElwee. Had a good game for the, the French as well. What a scene. How about that crossover, though, that first goal? I love it. Love it. <laughs> it, it it's, it's really an incredible story. And the, the fans have, have rallied around them. And, and that's just one of the storylines here today. You know, some, some of the big winners today uh, that you'll get to see in action if they continue to win later this week. Uh, Ireland 
and Israel will play tomorrow at 1.30 in an elimination game. And, and this team from Israel has some players familiar to American fans. Ari Sussman, Lee Coppersmith, uh, Casey Cittadino. They're, they're coached by uh, Jeff Goldberg, uh, a great high school coach out of Florida. Netherlands will play New Zealand at 4.30. The Scots and the Finns play on ESPN3 at 10 a.m. And then Germany and Czechoslovakia play at 1. And what happens is, you know, those teams from those divisions, if you can win two games, you get to play in the quarterfinals against Blue Division 3 and 4. That's likely to be the loser of this game and either Australia or England. It's all about the day off for the Blue Division teams, Q. You get that Wednesday off. You get to go to Lohi and have a great lunch <laughs> and relax and enjoy it for a second. Spill iced tea everywhere, right? Spill iced tea on your lap. Great spot, though. We're, we're here for another week. Terrific uh, hospitality shown by this entire city hosting this event. We've dealt with some weather delays. We're looking at the long-term forecast. Things are going to cool off later in the week as Dixon and Jeremy Noble can't connect. Nice defense by Sid Smith. He's still got the magic in that wand, doesn't he? That's unbelievable. Look at that ground ball. I mean, that's Marshall Abrams-like, who is maybe the best defender ever to play for the Iroquois, Syracuse University Defender of the Year in 2000. Lazor wants to run, no numbers, and so the Iroquois will settle. Sid Smith, Syracuse 09, national champions that year. He made a key stop late in that ball game. And then his, his mate, Cody Jamison, who's on this squad, scored the game winner. And Sid Smith was a second team All-American for the Cuse back in 09. Syracuse has such a long legacy of Native American players going back to Oren Lyons, their talented goalie from 1958 who played with Jim Brown and Slugger. Yeah, Roy Simmons. Coached by Roy Simmons Sr. And Oren Lyons actually boxed at Syracuse as well. 139 pounder. Played indoor lacrosse without a helmet or face mask. Lyle Thompson, dish in front. Stops off the mark, race to the end line. Look at Jamison, great hustle. I like that call though, Jamison closest to the ball when it went out of bounds, great hustle. They have numbers. Backside restart, Zach Miller blocked. Great defense by Jordan Hall and he'll try to corral this outlet pass. 44 in red, what a gutsy play, he can't. That ball comes off the carpet with spin. Take another look at this. Watch Stotts in front. The vision of Lyle Thompson on display and Randy Stotts normally cans that. Eight and a half minutes to go. Team Canada trailed 1-0. Lyle Thompson with the only marker for the Iroquois Nationals. Their youngest team in history. Got about nine guys in college right now, both at Division I programs and Onondaga Community College in upstate New York. Lyle, ankle breaking. Watch out for the dive shot. One-handed, little flip. Cody can't connect. Jamison in a ground ball tussle. Great play by Kyle Rubish. Rubish rakes it out of the pack. Matt Vince gets it going forward. Vince and Zach Miller, who's gonna come up with this? This is a ground ball that just uh, covered 60 yards and it's the Iroquois Nationals and they may have some numbers coming out of this ground ball situation. Jeremy Thompson double teamed, triple teamed, and the ball's on the ground. Here comes Canada. Back and forth we go, look out at the midfield line. McIntosh eludes Sid Smith. There are men down open, down low. Can they connect? It's Dixon. Dipping dunk balls in the back of the net. A gorgeous transition goal. This guy's for real. Curtis Dixon last night. Had about three goals like this where the stick is an absolute extension of his upper body. It's all in one motion. And such sense around that goal line extended 71 in red. Curtis Dixon filling it up. Jeff Snyder set to Settle over this faceoff. As you take another look at this goal off the transition, look at this catch on the far post. Warren Hill, the goaltender, is just way too over aggressive there. He, he's got to plant himself on the post and basically become a statue. 
Snyder wins the draw, attempts to pop the ball out of the back of his stick. He gets one attempt to do that. The ball stayed in there, and so it'll be a turnover, and Iroquois Nationals will look to cut the margin. Those face-off guys with the narrow heads, a lot of times they want it that way, so when they win the draw, the ball is kind of jammed in the plastic of the head. The downside of that is sometimes you can't dislodge it. But right now, Q, the story of this first half, the defense of Canada and the main man in cage is absolutely dominant, Dylan Ward. Loose ball in front. Jameson. Look, this is fierce, fierce ground ball play. Here comes Canada once again. Could have a numbers advantage. Roy to King, back to Roy. Right-handed. Off target. Warren Hill has made four stops for the Iroquois Nationals. And there he is, number one. Lefty. Headed to Syracuse. 5'11", 200 pounds, where... He'll challenge Bobby Wardwell for the starting spot. Shatler comes up out of the pack. Headman pass to Mike Lazor. He's got Randy Stotts open down low. Behind the back, cross cage. Oh, a gorgeous opportunity. And nothing is bouncing the way for the Iroquois Nationals. Great they had an movement. absolute layup on the backside. How many opportunities have they not cashed in on the doorstep? This one will drive Randy Stotts nuts. Just can't corral that ball. And then afterwards, I think he gets a push with possession. The double whammy for Stotts. He'll be spending some time in the box. Randy Stotts had an excellent debut season for the Syracuse Orange. 33 goals, 23 assists in 14 games. Most amazing to me, he shot 47% this year. He's not even a crease guy. That's... And played through injury, too. I mean, he, he was not healthy. Little hidden ball trick. Who's got it? Who's got it? The camera guys weren't fooled. U.S. scored a hidden ball trick goal last night on this very field. Extra man opportunity for Canada, who's been in control. Matthews jams it to Wesley Berg. Ball's on the carpet. Bucktooth's got that hickory shaft. Look out. Ouch. Wow. Wow. Those are full wooden poles, and Mark Matthews just walks into the darkness, and he is in a lot of pain. Travis Hill hammering on the elbows of the big lefty. And there you see right in his face. Dead arm city right here. These are the wooden hickory sticks. Bam, right across on the, hip. the hip. Ouch. But here's one. Look at that. Ow. Right between the arm pad and the shoulder pad, which is pure bone. <laughs> that hurts. There's a good look at that stick. Handcrafted as Steve Bevel talks to Travis Hill. Six Nations Chiefs played midfield at Canisius. Played in the National Lacrosse League for Rochester to Travis Hill. Extra man continues as Dixon changes levels and sends that one off into the night sky where we knock on wood, don't see any lightning. It's been a week filled with weather delays. Paul and I have been on the late shift, and we mean really late, as Greer sends one wide. Last night we got off the air at 11.45 Mountain Time. Gonna do dinner after this. This is like an early night. These penalties, catastrophic. What a look, down low, Dixon rattles that one off the crossbar. But another penalty against the Iroquois Nationals. We said earlier, 43 games on the ESPN networks. Tomorrow, things kick off on ESPN 3 at 10 a.m. Turquoise against white divisions. Oh, who's that? Well, it's Scotland and Finland. I think the Scots should be favored in that game. And then Germany against the Czechs at 1. Germany's a two-goal favorite. And you get some blue division action. Japan, Canada at 4. USA, England, ESPN U at 7. And then the Iroquois against Australia. And on the field behind us, Australia and England are tied at three apiece in a rivalry game. No doubt. What an atmosphere here tonight, Q. Left-handed rip by Greer off the mark. And that ball is awarded to the Iroquois Nationals. 
which was a great call because Warren Hill and Cage was closest to the ball when yeah. it went out of bounds. When you're in the 3-3 set, there's no backup. A, 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 as a goalie, and they missed the goal. I am making a beeline to that end line and trying to sell the refs that I'm there first. So right now, Team Canada's extra man tonight is one of seven. They've left the door open. Timeout will be called by Steve Bevel as he tries to find some offensive flow, so to speak. Offensive coordinator Mark Van Arsdale, who's an assistant at Virginia, will diagram a, a play that should feature both Miles and Lyle Thompson. And this Canadian defense, I thought they played well against uh, Team USA on Thursday night, holding them to 10. They've even stepped it up a notch. They've been physical in front, excellent on loose balls, good in transition. They've held their own in the matchups. And this is a unit that just hasn't played too much together, so you got to be impressed, and I think each game they will get better, and if they're on a collision course with Team USA, expect them to give the Americans everything they can handle, swarming the ball, great on grounders, and that's what you get when you have that box lacrosse background. Exceptional on loose balls. Earlier today, Team USA dominated Japan right here on ESPNU, 21-3, jumping out to a 7-0 first quarter run. Ned Crotty had four. Rob Pinnell had five assists. Had a bunch of guys with hat tricks. Brendan Mundorf, Garrett Thule, and Kevin Lavelle was back in the lineup. The defense held Japan to only 13 shots on goal. Japan has never beaten Team USA. Some injury issues, though. Kyle Harrison did not play today. He dressed with what appears to be some kind of leg injury. He tweeted that he's fine and okay. Dan Burns left the game with a leg injury, and Jesse Schwartzman had a shot to his thumb. He also said that, that he was okay. So there are some injuries, maybe a little shortage in the defensive midfield position. Yeah, that that's where they, they, can, they cannot afford to lose Dan Burns, who's just a, a grinder of a short stick defensive midfielder. And Kyle Harrison has played both ways as well this year. And that's fortunate Mitch Belisle, who's a long pole, to, to pick up the slack and play with a short stick. That, that is a pass that gives coaches gray hairs is, is it appeared to be a turnover but as the ball was sailing out of bounds a slash these two teams combined for six goals early in that first quarter in the second quarter we've only had one tally Stop. And they're stopping the clock take a look at this right now Jeremy Thompson drives down uh, they're calling I, I don't know is that a slash well, I, I think what has happened now with, with some of the stick swinging we've seen, I think the call referees tight. are, are going to call it tight from here on out to try to make sure that doesn't escalate. Oh, sorry. Ready. Sorry. Extra man for the Iroquois Nationals who haven't scored since early in the first quarter. Their only goal from Lyle Thompson. Craig Point, again a shot blocked. Brody Merrill brought blocks that shot and shows a ton of courage on that right-handed wing. Jamison and Zach Miller, the lefty, backside feed, somehow caught, and now we're gonna see another penalty. This will be probably a holding violation against Team Canada. I don't know how Miles Thompson caught that feed from Zach Miller, he just gunned it down to that back pipe. Take a look at this right here, catches it, then he just gets horse hooked. Good call, Dylan Roy in the box as the third quarter will start, Q. So when that third quarter starts, the Iroquois Nationals will be on the extra man, looking to find their offense. Standing room only here in Denver, Colorado. Folks came to see the Thompson brothers, all four of them, but they've been held to one goal. This story's been about Dylan Ward and the Canadian offense. The guys in red lead six to one. Welcome back to the World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. We are in Denver, Colorado. That is Gary Gate, Syracuse University legend. Or you could make an argument that Gary's the best offensive player of all time. Three times played for Team Canada. 1990, second place finish. 1994, they were actually upset by the Australians. And then 1998 in that uh, epic final loss to Team USA. And you see him alongside John Grant Jr. as 
Team Canada has some very, very qualified assistant coaches. You had some battles with Gary. Gay. Uh, I know. I was, I was thinking about Dylan and, and, <laughs> and just seeing his motion. Just I was like, I can't watch that. I've seen that enough. Uh, don't oh. sell yourself short. You, you guys, uh, Petromala and you and I've yet Brian to watch. Volker were the one defense that could yeah. keep them under wraps. I, I've yet to watch the 89 championship. Get out of here. Yeah, one I've, of the I've, best games ever. I've seen highlights of it, but I refuse to watch it. It's such a heartbreaking loss. Craig Point and Dylan Ward picks off another save. He starts this third quarter where he left off. And that, I always thought, was a very important shot for a goaltender, Clark. The first one of the second half. Yeah, and I don't like that extra man opportunity for Iroquois. You have a great chance to get things going, get your second goal on the board, and you don't even get the defense to commit or rotate. Easy stop for Ward. Point passes that one down to Stotts. Swings it around the backside to Cody Jamison. Iroquois looking for some answer. You, take, you look at their scoring as Ward makes another stop and that ball crosses the goal line. So finally, the Nationals are able to break the seal after an early Lyle Thompson goal. It's Cody Jamison. When a goalie's standing on his head, you do whatever you can to get it past the goal line. And the jammer, Cody Jamison, Ward's on that one, but crosses that plane. Watch this ball. Saves made initially, and it drops down and hits the back of his heel. Those drive goalies nuts because you're on it. The position's there. Just an unfortunate bounce, but Jammer and the Nationals need to get some things going, and a goal like that sometimes can change momentum. A tight view of Vaughn Harris and Jeff Snyder as Harris is... Flag for the faceoff violation. That's been an Achilles heel for this Iroquois national team. They had six violations in their first game. They had eight in their win over Japan last night. Beautiful super moon across the field. Play in conditions. Uh, hopefully no lightning tonight. We've been delayed about 45 minutes at the start of this ball game. In a week defined by evening thunderstorms. Circular ball movement by the Canadians now, up 6-2. to two. Jordan Hall down the left-handed alley. Effective switching defense by Adam Bomberry. He'll be a second-year player at OCC next year. Flint and Bomberry. One more to Dixon. Behind the net to Jeremy Noble, who's playing attack. Adam Jones and Zach Greer. No shot clock, no timer on. Teams can be very patient with the international rules. It's two ball rotations. And now the reverse. Flint wants his right hand. Finds Hall. Down low to Dixon. Covered well by Oakley Thomas. 71 in white. Jeremy Noble, a little dish in front. Greer went to the behind the back. Possession Love. continues. Love 25 and Reds. Feeding ability. Heads always up. Sneak attack by Noble. Great save by Warren Hill, the lefty. This game and the game against Team USA are going to be a big time litmus test for the goaltender. Little look at Zach Greer. BTB action behind the back. And when you're losing your angle, you throw it behind your back, it's like switching hands and increasing your scoring opportunity. So, smart move by Greer, just couldn't convert. Iroquois Nationals need a spark. See, Dylan Ward has had six stops. They've all been uh, terrific in terms of quality. I'm the boys in white right now, Q. I'm giving four. Lyle Thompson a spin here because he's the guy that can do things on the perimeter. He's got great vision. But the ball needs to be in his stick more. Nice pick off. Near side. It's Miles Thompson. It was a terrific little defensive play by Dylan Ward to intercept the Zach Miller pass, but he gave it right back. His defense, they were breaking out. This is a great play by the goaltender, but watch Lyle Thompson pick up this sloppy pass. He finds Brother Miles. 
Tawartan winner to Tawartan winner. Incredible. Both Thompsons this year broke the record of Steve Merol, 1992 UMBC. 114 plus points. That was the record that stood for so long. And that combination, number four and number seven, lethal. Always looking for each other. Jeff Snyder wins the draw for Team Canada. Up three. Nationals need a spark. Maybe that was it. And Snyder's the great equalizer. He was the absolute hero of the 2006 World Games, schooling the Americans in that championship game. And Canada taking home their second World Championship. They won it back in 1978 in one of the most incredible turnarounds from pool play. They, they lost their pool play game by a zillion goals, and then they upset the Americans in 78. The United States has won nine championships. Canada has won two. The highest finish for the Iroquois all time, fourth place. They believe that they're medal worthy this year. That's why I said at the top of the show, I think this is the biggest game in Iroquois National Lacrosse history at the World Championships based on that because they have the hype. Dixon with a dive shot, changing levels, an amazing goal by Curtis Dixon. See these guys yucking it up, but this goal is absolutely Sports Center top 10 worthy. Are you kidding me? Curtis Dixon flying through the air, 71 in white. That is straight up nasty. The aerial attack from the Delaware grad, and then he is pummeled to the turf in what looks to be another Iroquois national penalty. There's 71. Played collegiately for Delaware, graduating in 2010. The Blue Hen program making that final four back in 07. Dixon scored 62 goals as a senior. This guy's flying all over the place, but what you didn't see, Q, I, I caught it at the tail end after the Dixon goal. Wesley Berg was whacked with the wooden stick as well, and he was hurting after that. It looked like his arm was straight up dead, but Curtis Dixon, he's been such a huge piece of this Canadian offensive success in these world championships. The big story of John Grant not playing. Dixon, 71 in red, has flat out delivered. Coach Randy Mearns, coaching with his stick tonight. Head coach of Canisius, who's done such a fine job leading them to the NCAAs twice. Interesting at the beginning of the week, Clark, when, when I went to uh, watch the Iroquois practice at, at Denver East with, with, with Joe B. Talking to Oren Lyons, Jr., the, really the founder of this Iroquois Nationals program, said, we've always had the skill and we've always had the ability. We've got to show discipline, and that has always been, been an issue, uh, spending too much time in the penalty box. And it's a storyline tonight. They've really throttled their offense by just playing too much defense and trying to kill off these penalties. It's destroyed their flow. Here's Dixon. Skip pass off the mark. And sails out of bounds. You know, that's a great point, Q. And, and even though Canada really isn't converting on the extra man, their extra man has, has struggled tonight. It still isn't giving the Iroquois any type of flow offensively, getting into a rhythm, getting into a system, and they need to clean it up. The discipline, I, I think, is has been a disaster for the guys in white. Hill backs himself into the corner, trying to rag this penalty time. The Nationals will use the whole field. This is Oakley Thomas, lefty. He plays at Onondaga, played at Salmon River High School. Juco All-American as a freshman. He's strong. Two goals. He actually played some extra man for Chuck Wilbur. He's got one more year left, and in my eyes, he looks like a big-time Division I defender. He moves well for a big boy. Canada now falls to one and eight with the extra man. It's a lot of penalty time though. You add it up, and it's less time for the Thompsons to showcase their stuff. Righty, righty. Lefty. Now ball in the corner. Nice box out job by Miles. Can he keep it alive? He does. Stotts is there on the scene. Dylan Ward. Jesse Gamble, transitional midfielder in National 
lacrosse league out of Cornell, studying for his MBA, running for his life. Nice play by Campbell. One more, they got numbers down below. Noble, what a fake. Too easy, that play starts with Jesse Gamble, nine in red, and a tough ground ball on the defensive end. Right on cue, he was completely harassed on the defensive end, but the patience of Jeremy Noble, you mentioned earlier, one of the smartest players, Matt Brown, offensive coordinator, has ever coached. I love the fact that he didn't make that pass too because the defenseman that was approaching him was right in his angle. Look at that right here. And sticks it to the offside, the lefty goalie, Warren Hill, no shot. That's Canadian lacrosse at its best. Gritty ground ball play by Gamble. Jesse King with a nice headman pass. A late substitution from the Iroquois. ESPN News coverage of World Lacrosse Championship continues Tuesday at 7. That's Tuesday on ESPNU, the Iroquois and Team USA. World Championships presented by Trusted Choice. Tuesday at 7. This very Team Iroquois against Team USA, who is now undefeated. The coaching staff here, scouting this game in person. It's a big coaching staff. We saw them out at last night's game between Canada and England. Certainly leaving no stone unturned. Very likely that they'll play the Iroquois at least once in this tournament and could play Canada once again. I think the big thing for Team USA is finding opportunities in transition against both these squads. And if you can run up and down with your defensive midfielders and prevent Canada and Iroquois for getting in those six-on-six -six sets, I just think the, the American game, when it's played at its highest level, is that end-to-end -end action. And these Canadians and... The Iroquois national offensive players so lethal in the six-on-six -six set, jamming the ball inside, the sheer sticks. He's Paul Carcaterra, I'm Quinn Kesnick, halfway through the third quarter. World Championships, pool play of the blue division, Canada in red, and the Iroquois Nationals. Nice snappy ball movement. Falls behind the goal, dish inside to Dixon is off target. But the ninth penalty against the Iroquois Nationals. That's been a big storyline. They have not given themselves enough offensive possessions and spent way too much time in the penalty box. This has been a nightmare for the defense, and Canada has answered with extra man ball movement. Look, always finding that next guy. It just seems like they're completely in sync, and although the English didn't give the Canadians a game last night, Quinn, I think it allowed their offense really to get familiar with one another, find that next man, and they're such low right now. Mike Lazor cools his heels in the penalty box. As Canada goes to work, they're only one of eight with the extra man. Hard to believe a, a unit with this type, type of skill has not been able to convert. Noble's behind the net. Eyes are up. Nothing doing inside. Dixon to King. Back to Dixon. To Noble. To Berg. Snappy ball movement, but nice coverage inside. King's not an outside shooter from that range. Dixon is. Berg's got a righty rip. Noble's a passer from up top. The lefty King. Canada in no rush. They change the formation. They rotate up. Matthews looks backside. Steps in. Through pass. Deflected nicely by Sid Smith. Air traffic control. The guys in white, when they're manned down, have actually packed it in quite well and not over-rotating. When they're in the six-on-six six set, you find them doing that. Dixon's shot is blocked. If you're the Iroquois Nationals, maybe you should go zone. Good point. Seems like they understand the zone concepts extremely well. Exactly, because they're on that string with the crease in the perimeter. I think when they get on that man-to-man six-on-six set, they're sliding too early, and that defense breaks down quickly. Timeout by Coach Steve Bevel head coach at SUNY Cortland, and there you see Mark Van Arsdale. All of these Iroquois players grow up uh, given a lacrosse stick at birth. Most of their early lacrosse, though, is played indoors, and perhaps that zone defense carries over from the indoor game pretty well. We talked about Team USA. Nice victory last night. Today, today it continued against the Japanese, 21-3.
Kevin Buchanan gets on the board. Two lefty rips. 7-0 first quarter lead. Brendan Mundorf absolutely pegs the corner. Anytime you hear it snap, Max Seabald's got the good speed. And then in transition, it was Ned Crotty. He had four, Mundorf had three. Rob Pinnell, not seen on video, but he had five assists. A step forward for Team USA. They've never lost to Team Japan and only allowed 13 shots on goal today. And the five assists to me are a huge stat for Pinnell because he's taking ownership of the offense from a, a quarterbacking standpoint. His head's always up, <laughs> distributing the rock to all these playmakers. And you talk about perimeter guys, Buchanan and Lawson, that could just fill it up. Team USA faces England tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock on ESPNU. The English right now, after being in a 3-3 tie with Australia, are down 7-3 at the end of the third quarter. So the Aussie Sharks, you know what that rivalry was like, Paul, when you played in the World Games back in 1998. The Aussies have owned England in World Championship play. England coming off the 2012 European Championship. A veteran team with some new young collegiate players like Colin Clive out of Siena and Matt Sexton out of Penn State and Aaron Prosser out of Drexel, but uh, same old story. Yeah, I like the Australian speed even in the game against the Americans yesterday. You and I watched that on field 10 and we thought they had some capable guys in the middle of the field. And we have Australia Iroquois tomorrow night at 10 o'clock on ESPN3. And I really think the Aussies are going to be a tough matchup for the Iroquois Nationals from a style standpoint and from an emotional standpoint because there's so much emotional investment in this game right now that tomorrow could be the let-up game. Just a prediction. Nice defense by Mike Lazor. This guy's a big-time athlete, a two-sport star at Hobart. Grew up in Carthage, New York. The Comets, home of the Powells. Yeah, no Talking doubt. about him at lunch today. Yeah, Casey was the... Casey Powell, if he tried out for Team USA, would have had a shot. Uh, absolutely, 38 years old and second leading scorer in Major League Lacrosse right now. He's crushing it. And you think that if Mikey was still active, he would have been a lock for Team USA. Top two or three player on the team. I mean, I think that guy just moves differently than any lacrosse player I've ever seen. I mean, his body control and ability to to just make some freakish offensive plays is just completely unmatched. And the stick skills, too. I mean, top two or three stick handler of all time, and you can argue in some respects, maybe the best stick skills to ever play the attack position. And I love the third brother, Ryan Powell, who I always thought was the consummate team player, played his best on the big stage, maximized his abilities. I'm a, a huge fan and uh, uh, of Ryan. He was always my favorite Powell. Yeah, as, great as quarterback. That sound. Great quarterback. But the common theme between the Powells and the Thompsons, love of the game. Backyard lacrosse. Backyard lacrosse. Backyard exactly. lacrosse. I, I'm going Two to on ones, three on twos, wall ball, shooting on your own. I've been talking to kids all summer long. The I mean, that's the ground. biggest initiative for me is backyard lacrosse. Get back to the backyard. Wall ball can pay for college. It paid for mine. And it's the place where you can imagine and dream of being a superstar. Jordan McIntosh, midfielder slash faceoff man for Team Canada. He plays a vital role, getting an occasional run on offense and giving Jeff Snyder some breathers. And he'll put a lot of pressure on Tom Montour. Jerome Thompson has been very, very quiet tonight. 22 and white, comes into this game with seven goals after two games. Nobody's got better stick fakes than Mark Matthews. What about that one last night? There were two plays last night that I've never seen in 40 years watching lacrosse. The back, behind the back pass that Curtis Dixon threw while driving up right-handed. I had never seen before. And then Matthews fake late in the ball game. And this is where Canada will really slow the tempo down. The Iroquois Nationals have had no possession time on offense in the second half. And the fans here... They came in bunches to see the Thompsons, and this offense just non-existent because they just haven't had the rock. Team Canada, opening night loss to Team USA. What a great environment it was in the stadium. We'll be, we'll be back there Thursday night for our two semifinal games. The championship of this world champion is on Saturday as 
Canada now is being instructed to keep it in the box. Nobles hacked by Smith. Oakley's played a lot in the second half. 71 and white, and he looks pretty good. Big pump fake. Crowley. Dixon. Heads up. Great seat behind the goal to our right, as you see the fans back there, because during breaks, they can look over and they have a nice angle of the Australian-England game. You get two games for the price of one when you sit in the end zone, but you gotta have your head on a swivel back there, folks. You got a net in front of you, but you never know. That heads up call, I think of when you were calling that MLL game when Mikey Powell took a shot, and then Princeton, North Carolina about three years ago, when I was almost pegged you guys up in the booth. John Kettering in the truck, laughing hysterical. Nice pick off. That's Oakley Thomas making a, a name for himself tonight. As I said, the six foot, 210 pounder still has a year at Onondaga Community College for Chuck Wilbur. Juco All-American as a freshman. And I absolutely love what's going on at Onondaga. We talked about it last night, but the ability of that school to be a stepping stone for athletes coming off the reservation and the opportunity that it's affording great lacrosse players to better their lives, to use lacrosse as a vehicle. They've always played good lacrosse in upstate New York and on the Native American reservations, but, but now we're seeing a, a trend where in, in the last five years that these guys are, are getting great educations and, and, and bettering their lives. Stats, untouched. It's a four goal margin. Randy Stats, an OCC product. That's why you gotta wonder why isn't Chuck Wilbur on this staff? He'd be an amazing addition to this offensive creativity by the guys in white. Why do you need a, a left hand when you can do this with your right? Looking for a little bit of a dive shot originally right here. Decides to bring it back in a little bit of a twister. That was a situation where his defensive man took the bad angle, lost his edge. There was no coverage inside. The defense was a bit spread out. And all of a sudden, it's a four-goal margin. Vaughn Harris got away with a violation there. He beat Snyder to the punch, but no violation. And a great ground ball by Cato Hill. Cato Hill can move. Great on the ground. I like his athletic ability. So soft in terms of his running motion and just glides 66 and white. ESPN News coverage of FIL World Lacrosse Championship continues tomorrow as England looks for a win against the United States. It's the World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice, Monday at 7 on ESPNU. That's our game tomorrow, correct? Yep, no doubt. We know the English team pretty well. We've seen them twice. We've spent a day at their practice. I think you'll love seeing their goaltender, Big Ben McAllister, playing in his fourth World Championships. Stotts, quick release, Dylan Ward with the body save. So Randy Stotts looking like the most confident player of, on the Iroquois offense. Jesse Gamble. Again, a good clear to Cam Flint. Canadian offense hasn't exactly been tearing it up since the first quarter. They led 5-1 after the first 20 minutes. Since then, they've only scored three goals as we're under a minute in this third quarter. Hanging around the guys in white right now, and if they can clean up those penalties and possess the ball, I mean, they've had some success penetrating this defense, but Dylan Ward's been incredible in net, too. Earl's a two-handed dodger. Nice kick save by Warren Hill. Wow, that's a thing of beauty. Kick save and a beauty. Like to see that ball mark tomorrow. I heard that flesh and that ball was released and hit Warren Hill right in the leg. Greer looking to be the hero late in this third quarter. And the quarter ends. Positive ending to this third quarter for the Iroquois national team. They trailed 6-1 to one at halftime, but goals by Cody Jamison and Randy Stotts. Next thing you know, it's a four goal margin. The Thompsons and the Iroquois look to come back on ESPNU, the fourth quarter, in a moment. World Lacrosse Championships is presented by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents. Free to do what's right for you.
Welcome back to Denver, Colorado. World Across Championships. Watch this last kick save. It's David Earl. A two-handed dodger rolls back. Great opportunity from six yards. There's no way Warren Hill's getting a stick there, but he kicks it out. Watch his left leg. Boom, Ow. right off the knee. Ow. What does that feel like? Uh, you, get, you get a lot of that. You know, as a young goalie, you got to learn to become friends with the ice bag. And every night I did my homework, I had ice bags on, on wherever I was hit. Usually it was the arms or, or the upper thighs uh, and those fleshy parts. Where's the worst spot? Look at our game hit. track. Worst There's, spot. Uh, I don't think there is a worst spot. I, I think the worst spot is where you have an existing bruise. And that's why icing on a nightly basis is so important. 8-4 lead by Canada. Look at Snyder and Thompson try to dig this one out. Snyder's got that clamp one. Now the question is, can he do anything with it? Nice move by Jeremy Thompson to get underneath the stick of Snyder and, and yank that ball out. So a 50-50 grounder in front. Easy goal. It's Lyle Thompson, and guess what? It's a three-goal game. It was Jeremy who put the ball on the carpet after Snyder won the clamp. And the Iroquois Nationals get a huge ground ball. And a smart play by the Iroquois coaching staff. Do you see that pass by Miles? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable backhand pass. And when you put Lyle on attack, you put another surefire finisher. He's been playing midfield today. I like the move, and I think he wants the ball in his stick. And by having him at attack, he's in his natural spot now, and he can run this offense, Q. What looked to be just a random kick of the ball up into up into the air was a brilliant, brilliant yes. pass by Miles. And Lyle Thompson has scored his second goal of the game, and there's hope. Snyder dealing with Jeremy Thompson and does so effectively. Kicks it out front to Wesley Berg, who returned to the Denver Pioneers for his senior season. It's a program they've made three Final Fours. Head coach Bill Tierney brings back a team that'll be universally ranked in the top five. I got a feeling Notre Dame's gonna be a top five ball club. Duke, just because they're Duke, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of giving a team a high ranking because they won the prior year, but they do bring back Deemer Class and Miles Jones. Here's Berg with a rifle off the crossbar. He's a man, straight up beast, 14 in red, and Bill Tierney's got another year with him and a plethora of offensive talented players. Zach Miller, 33 in white on this field. I like the Pioneers in 2015. I think Tierney is going to be right in the thick of that national title race. Brendan Bomberry, who's an alternate on the Iroquois national team, will be attending Denver after he spent this year at the Hill Academy with Brody Merrill. Zach Miller, you just mentioned, he'll be a sophomore at Denver. Covered by Dan Coates. Miller wants his left hand. He can make magic feet out front, and that's a little outside of Miles Thompson's range. This is the matchup I've been waiting for all night long. Merrill. Brody Merrill, one of the best ever against Lyle Thompson. Merrill, heavy cross check. Lyle rolls, behind his back! Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. Fans on their feet behind the net. Had he put that ball into the goal, this place would have absolutely gone ballistic. Watch it! Oh my gosh, and a goal from the Iroquois Nationals as we're showing you the replay. They have caught fire here. So all of a sudden, we talk about this team being a rhythm offense, a flow-based offense. The crowd is jacked, and they're feeling it now. The switch to Lyle Thompson to attack pays dividends. Watch what happened. No stage too big for four and white. We saw it all season long at the University of Albany. This is one of the best defenders ever to play the game. And mark my words, he will be going after him the rest of this evening. The move to Lyle down low to attack has produced back-to-back -back goals. And the margin is 8-6. Canada led 8-3 late in the third quarter. Game on. Here he is again, showcasing terrific, terrific footwork. Out of the box, it's Shadler! Can't handle! It's a play on, he's in the crease, but it comes up in a Canadian stick. Jordan Hall, 
Canada may have some transition here. Gamble has Brody Merrill to his right. It's a five on four. Merrill chooses to slow it down. High heat all week. Storms rolling in every night. Altitude. These athletes, five days in a row of intense competition. It's both a mental challenge and a physical challenge, unlike any. At the collegiate level, they don't want to play midweek games. These guys will play seven games in nine days. David complete their substitution package. They look sharp early on offense. 5-1 five, five, lead at the end of the first quarter. They have sputtered on the extra man. They're one of nine, and now that's carried over into their settled offense. Canada needs to make a big play here. Jeremy Noble. David Earls showing really good legs tonight. He looks fast. Out of Notre Dame, I said earlier his dad was born in Canada. Played pro hockey in New England. Cam Flint and Earl play catch. Keep it in now on. So Canada. The field shrinks as Zach Greer rifles a lefty from the far wing. There's an edge right now, Q. I'm feeling something. This game is completely different than the first three quarters. You got Lyle Thompson at attack. You know that four and white, when that ball's on the other side of the field, is going to get going. The Iroquois have stayed out of the penalty box. They've also done a better job on ground balls in the middle of the field. Can they D up here? Greer against Jeremy Thompson. Shakes him. Great stop by Hill. You talk about anticipation. He read Greer and matched him down low. A big time stop to the netminder headed to Syracuse. Right now, the Iroquois go to offense and Scott Moore dealt with it for the first year of Lyle Thompson's collegiate career. He played him at midfield because he wanted him in space and he's such a great athlete. But by moving him to attack, you give him the keys to the offense and he just makes everyone around him better. The problem with the Iroquois coming in, did they have the athletes on the perimeter? They had to put Thompson at midfield, but this is where he belongs. Here's Lyle, looking to feed, guarded by Brody Merrill, future Hall of Famer. Merrill sits down well on that right corner. Excellent off-ball movement by the Nationals. They get a switch. Thompson's earned the switch. Behind the back pass, fans calling for the hold loudly. And it's Zach Miller who saves this ball from going out of bounds. Miller against Merrill. Cross check. Ooh, backhanded shot. They don't teach that at summer camp, Cart. No, that is found in the, the backyard in, in a kid's imagination. And this is what happens when you get to see the Thompsons and Zach Miller. You have all these little kids across the nation and, and in other countries dreaming to be magicians. Miles Thompson running away from pressure as the Iroquois squad subs on offense. So they'll be deliberate, get some fresh legs. The youngest team they've ever brought to these world championships, this group. Will it pay dividends later in the week? What looked to be a crease violation is going to be a holding call against Dylan Roy, 91, can't believe it. And a gargantuan door has just opened. Extra man opportunity. And how about the endurance of Lyle Thompson just going after it time and time again? Ah, uh, that's a tough call. Lyle's the trigger man. Top of this 3-3 set. Zach Miller gets careless. A great play by Matt Vince. Jameson, far side. Point! He stuck it. Craig Point from Cody Jameson. We have a ball game. He absolutely paints this corner. Cody Jameson has a bit of an angle here. But the soft spot in the defense is across the field. You see all the red shirts playing ball side. And when you give Craig Point time and room, did you hear that corner painted? Bing! Snap. And all the momentum has swung to the Iroquois Nationals down 8-3 to three late in the third quarter.
They have fought back with four straight goals. Craig Point, a righty cannon. He is an incredible shooter on the extra man. Game on. Iroquois feeling it. 11 minutes to go. This is getting interesting. Back here in Denver, it was an Iroquois national offense that was sputtering down eight to three, but have caught fire late third and early fourth quarter. Dylan Moore's been fantastic for three quarters. There's only a matter of time if the Iroquois were able to put ridiculous pressure on 37 in red. And the move from midfield to attack to the absolute magician, Lyle Thompson has paid dividends. Craig Point, paint a corner, young man. It's eight to seven. Iroquois have stayed out of the penalty box for the most part in the second half after committing nine fouls early in this ball game. And they've gotten to play more offense because of that. Jeff Snyder has won 10 of the 16 draws in this game and looks to win another. He's the great equalizer, a grizzled vet who draws a foul. So Snyder's impact is everywhere as Vaughn Harris will be called for a pushing violation. Team USA, they dressed two photos because of that man, Jeff Snyder, and what happened back in 2006. You mentioned complete equalizer, and this guy, he's got ice in his veins. Complete competitor in the Iroquois. They're trying two guys, Vaughn Harris, 28 in white, 74. Jeremy Thompson, but no one has the answer for the bad boy, Jeff Snyder. Big time opportunity for Canada. Matthews and King are both lefties. Dixon, he likes the righty shot. Jones to Matthews overhand. Oh my gosh, what a fake. That was a huge fake. He absolutely smoked Oakley Thomas and then rattled that ball off the crossbar. He owns that face dodge slash toe drag. Good stop by Dylan Ward. Some high heat from Mike Lazor trying to catch uh, Ward napping. Soft hands, loose upper body. I tell young kids, when you throw fakes, you got to be a Gumby. You don't want to be stiff. Somebody's got too many men on the field right now. And we're seeing a flag. Canada ran one off the field. So if another man up opportunity on the horizon right now for Lyle Thompson and his mates. If I get a free play, Q, why wouldn't you just give it to Lyle Thompson and see what happens? You got the penalty on the back end. You got that free play. and Give it to your guy. Referee sorting things out over by the box. It's an international crew led by Chris Nine, Clark. Two, Christian Geschke of Germany. World's best officials are here. 18 games a day. Plus a youth festival, a lot going on in Denver. Here's Lyle. Far side to point. Down low to Stotts. We're tied up at eight. The extra man stops from five yards. This crowd is absolutely jacked. As they should be tied at eights, Randy Stats. That's his sweet spot. We saw it all year long playing at Syracuse. 45 in white. Unbelievable fourth quarter cue. Five goal run by this young Iroquois team. You see Randy Stotts in front of him is Jai Thompson, the father of the four Thompson boys. They have a sister named Crystal as Lazor comes up with another critical ground ball. Something about the youthful nature of this Iroquois team. The good legs, the never say die attitude. They have a strong belief and that has come to the surface here in the fourth quarter. Tied at eight. It's a new ball game with 7.15 to go here in Denver. Quinn Kesnick along with Paul, Car Paul Carcaterra and our hardworking crew brought you four games today. Tomorrow we've got five. 
between ESPNU and ESPN3. Fans want an off-ball call there as Jason Noble and Lyle Thompson tangled down to the ground. Jeremy Thompson covered by Cameron Holding, the lefty from Grand Valley State. Miles. He's more of a body dodger. Wants to lean in. Trying to sell a call. Looks like Casey Powell trying to sell that call. Get the ball behind to number four. Jeremy Thompson. A great leader with a strong voice is Jeremy. Stotts, ultra confident. He loves that cue. We see that all the time out of Randy Stotts. That backhand shovel shot. And here it is again. Under six minutes. Time ticking pretty quick here with these long possessions. Zach Miller. Ding. He hit the post. Critical ground ball at the midline. Great handle by Sid Smith to Miller. Four on three potential, but not so fast. Great recognition by the Iroquois Sid Smith, the defender. When he crossed that midline, someone had to be back. Jeremy Thompson, huge IQ move. Oakley Thomas did a good job boxing out. The Iroquois national player sprinted back defensively, freeing up Sid Smith. Classic, classic ground ball play at the midline. Pick is set, and they earn the switch. This is trouble for the Canadians. Lyle, nice stop by Dylan Ward. Danger in front. This is off Canada. What a ground ball play by Cameron Holden. Keep that ball alive. But there's Oakley Thomas. And Warren Hill will control, under five minutes to go. Tied up in a ball game that saw Canadian domination. 6-1 at half, 8-3 late in the fourth quarter, or excuse me, the third quarter. And now a 5-0 run by this young Iroquois team. They have owned the ball off the carpet in the fourth quarter. 8-3 ground ball edge. Questions about conditioning answered. Young team has fresh legs. Jerome Thompson has seven goals this tournament. He's the oldest of the four brothers. Well defended by Jesse Gamble. How about that little poke check? This is a big ground ball, and it's kicked out to Cody Jameson. Behind the goal to Stotts. Check that. That's Lyle. In front. Good look here. Miles is off target. Under four minutes to go. The Iroquois have never beaten Canada in international competition. Lyle's got a size advantage over Jason Noble. Everything but the finish. You see the strength of Lyle Thompson. You look at him, he's skinny in frame, but you rarely see this kid get pushed out or lose his balance. It's incredible. Great balance, tremendous core strength that allows him to lean in on bigger players and create angles. Brett Bucktooth, former second team All-American at Syracuse University. Taken down behind the goal by Jordan Hall. Fans behind the net want to call. Don't see any flags. Feed in front. Another shot goes wide. Iroquois owning possessions. This Canadian defense is on the ropes big time. Trying to hold on here defensively. 15 fourth quarter shots from the Iroquois, only four from Canada. Under three minutes. This is Lyle Thompson, Tawaraton Trophy winner. He's doubled. Bucktooth was open, but there's no connection. And Canada, a tired Canadian defense, looks to clear. Fatigue has shown up. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Well said, when you put that much pressure on a defense, and Brody Merrill has been all over the field tonight, running around chasing the 22-year-old Lyle Thompson. 
Another miss. It was Jerome Thompson who beat Merrill back to the middle. Canada needs a timeout. They're absolutely gassed on defense. Look at these players walk to the sideline, bending over at the waist. They are toast. It's like a big time boxing match. Only so many body shots you can take and when number four is delivering them, they come in bunches. Lyle Thompson, no stage too big for the senior to be at the University of Albany. He's taken the lacrosse world by storm, rightfully so. He is our trusted choice player of the game with a hat trick and one assist. And that was a much needed timeout. We see how ball possession can change fatigue. An eight to three Canadian lead has dissolved into a tie now with under three minutes to go. And on the field behind us, the Australians celebrate another victory against England. And so Team Australia, who played so very well in their loss to the US last night gets a, a rivalry victory over England and they take a big step closer to a medal here uh, and, and a strong showing in pool play. Uh, England can't get over the hump when it comes to Australia. The Aussies think a little bit better in the middle of the field and this is a lacrosse fans paradise right now. You have that game wrapping up. There's a fight at the end of the game. This one 8-8. Eight, eight. This is such an incredible atmosphere. Steve Bevel, head coach of the Iroquois. Now, he looks like a boxer in the corner. You know, he's not drinking the water. He's just mushing it around his mouth and spitting it. Eight to eight, and Randy Mearns with a very smart timeout, defensive timeout for a Canadian defense that was exhausted. Tons of ground ball control in the second half has led to more possession. The fan rallying around the Thompsons. They are the Beatles of lacrosse. I've never seen kids react the way they do to that man, Lyle Thompson and Miles. Jeremy is as classy as it gets. The Native American tie-in to the roots of this great game. How humble they are, playing for the creator, not worrying about winning or losing. That's a terrific, terrific story that has captured the imagination of the lacrosse world. And number four in white. For my money, I said it during the season. He's on the Mount Rushmore of all-time greats in lacrosse history. And this will be another defining moment if he can get the Iroquois Nationals over the hump against Canada. Stotts against Coates. Stotts likes to lean in and use his shoulders. Well defended by Dan Coates. A little miscommunication with Zach Miller. Took his eye off the pill. And a pushing violation on that grounder. Sid Smith pushes Curtis Dixon. Wow. Unbelievable. And Iroquois head coach Steve Bevel uses his last timeout. So it'll be Canada's ball with under two minutes to go. Here's the play, Paul. What, what happens? Miller goes to the grounder. Sid Smith, the defender on the other side. Ooh. I... We saw the Canadian offensive player, Curtis Dixon, fall down, but I don't know if it was if it was a legit push. Coverage continues tomorrow. And then on Tuesday we have ESPN News coverage with the Iroquois and Team USA at 7 o'clock. It's the World Championships presented by Trusted Choice Tuesday at 7 on ESPNU. You can also watch that game on ESPN. There's Gary Gate, one of their offensive assistants. Matt Brown is unseen there at the bottom of this pile, drawing up a play on a dry erase board. There's head coach Randy Mearns with his hand on the shoulder of Kevin Crowley. Matt Brown, offensive coordinator. You can't see him in the picture right there. He's drawn something special up. One of the best offensive minds in the game of lacrosse. We'll see some kind of scissor type of, of movement, I would assume. When do the they go? Red. When do they go here? You think they possess forever and, and, and you think they go right away with under two minutes to go? I don't think you could hold the ball too long. I, I think you want to get it around a couple times. You've been most successful when you get into a deeper possession against the Iroquois because I think 
their defense has broken down when they're asked to, to slide and recover. So within 15, 20 seconds, ball gets around once or twice, I'm going to the rack. Cam Flint's got to clear this ball. He'll be double teamed by Jamison and Montour right underneath our booth. Let's see if Canada's ready to clear. Sometimes in these situations, coaches put in the offensive play and forget to focus on the clear. First things first for Flint. And the Thompsons will ride you. Lyle Thompson chasing Cam Flint, being triple teamed. He's got a cross field outlet out of the box. Jeff Schneider. Surprised to see Jeff Schneider on the critical offensive possession. But the clear is made and Schneider hustles off. He was probably clearest to the box, the heady play by the veteran. Approaching the one minute mark, tied up at eight. Blue division play. This is pool play of the world championships here in Denver, Colorado. A standing room only crowd has been treated to a back and forth game. Canada led 6-1 at half and then 8-3. And the Iroquois have come storming back. Under a minute. The Iroquois have never beaten Team Canada in international play. This would be a huge step forward for a program whose highest finish is fourth place. So the plan's to hold for one shot. Be careful, though. You want to give some time with a backup so you get another opportunity. You have to attack your first shot. Make sure it's about 20 seconds left so you can get back into your offensive set. Just make sure you have that backup, too. Jeremy Noble drives right-handed. He gets topside. Feet free. Nice dish down low. It's Dixon. It's Dixon, 9-8. to eight. Canada takes the lead with 18 seconds to go. Noble drew the defense. Dixon sneaks from behind. And all across Canada, the fans are cheering. This is all about the patience of Jeremy Noble. Right here, a lot of players probably, Q, would have taken that shot. His head's up. He understands where the double team's coming. Sid Smith, out of position, doesn't turn his head until the pass is made. This is unbelievable awareness by 25 in red. And Dixon, who's been so crafty around goal line extended, sticks it. Extreme patience shown by Team Canada and a face-off violation from the Iroquois Nationals. Now all Canada has to do is run to victory. And they'll take a step closer towards getting a bye into the semifinals. Snyder's double teamed on the far side, but the clock's under 10. Snyder's going to send this ball up into the night sky, and we have a whistle. It'll be Iroquois ball. Clock stops with one second. Officials blowing the whistle. They're going to put one second back on the clock. But this is just a formality for Steve Bevel and the Iroquois team that has shown such courage coming from a five-goal deficit to tie this ball game up. This clock cue should have two plus seconds when that ball went out of bounds. Impossible to score with one second to go here. As we have some major stick swinging, major stick swinging in front of the Canadian goal. And this is going to be an ugly ending. Unfortunate here, this display of poor sportsmanship. Right now, 2.8 on the clock, so the retaliation, if it's on Canada, the Iroquois will get the ball, extra man, on the offensive side of the field. So that could be huge. They've reset the clock to 2.8. And now the officials have the difficult task of sorting out that scrum. Brody Merrill and Cody Jameson casually walking over to the official scoring table. That's Randy Mearns awaiting the decision. Game over. 
It is red ball. The official pointed it in the wrong direction. And so this baby is over. Canada will win this game nine to eight and improve to two and one with victories last night over England. And today over the Iroquois. Tomorrow the Canadians square off against Team Japan, four o'clock on ESPN three. The Americans play England tomorrow at seven o'clock on ESPNU. Get up early, go to work, and uh, turn us on at work tomorrow. We've got some elimination games at 10 a.m. on ESPN3, starting with Scotland and Finland. Mike Corey will have the call there. Mike working so hard all week long and learning these ball clubs with Jamie Monroe. One o'clock game is Germany and Czechoslovakia. As you see, the, the cream of the crop now start to rise. Israel's in action tomorrow against Ireland and the Netherlands and New Zealand as this game has come to a close and the players are going to tussle more flags and punching an ugly display of sportsmanship that you hate to see at an event of this magnitude the referees lost control of this game early in my estimation when the Iroquois national team came out with their hickory sticks and started stick swinging there is no way that those sticks should be legal in international competition in my estimation I believe they're dangerous and that has led to back and forth slashing, talking, jawing, and a bad display for the fans. You don't want to see a game like this end with guys chirping and getting into it, but from a lacrosse standpoint, the stage is set now, Q. This could be an amazing semifinal rematch later in the week. Well, the young Iroquois team will move forward off of this loss. They face Australia tomorrow. 10 p.m. on ESPN3. Japan and Canada at 4 o'clock on ESPN3. Canadians were excellent early, but how about that move from Lyle Thompson? That is something we've never seen. Tied it up at 8 late, but it was Curtis Dixon with the game winner. Once again, our final score, 9-8, Canada wins. We're back tomorrow for Paul and our entire crew. I'm Clint Kesnick. Good night, everybody.